2023 redesigned Range Rover Sport. This is the P530 first edition. Starting at over $120,000, is it worth the price of admission? Today we'll find out. <laughs> BMW sourced 4.4 liter twin turbo V8, 523 horsepower and heaps of torque made it to an eight speed automatic transmission. For 2023, they also had six cylinders with mild hybrids, plug-in hybrids. And then for 2024, they're adding more performance to this setup. You'll be able to see SVs and SVRs coming down the line. But today we're just rolling with a modest 523 horsepower. First zero to 60, is this gonna be in standard drive mode as well as auto terrain select? So let's see what this twin turbo V8 can do. <laughs> There's 60, 5.06. Um, the brakes had a really hard time keeping this V8 pinned back. This time I'm just gonna put it in dynamic mode as well as uh, switch it into the S drive. And uh, we're not gonna torque brake, we're just gonna hammer it from a stop. Um, okay, that seemed to be better actually. 5.11. The new Range Rover Sport, I mean, just like any Range Rover, is pretty amazing to look at. It's definitely a feast for the eyes. It is gorgeous from every single angle, and I cannot believe the size of these wheels. These are 23 inch wheels, and you even get a full size spare in the back. We got a two tone red and black design with the double fins up top quad tip exhaust here to let that v8 breathe and from the back it actually kind of looks like a smaller vehicle but let's go ahead and get into the cargo area we have a tonneau cover the seats can fold down but i actually have not been able to get them to fold down all the way so i'll hold these buttons down and then they stop almost before going all the way down i can't and it's not like the headrest is falling or hitting the seat there is space between maybe i'm doing something wrong you also can control the ride height from the back i just pumped it all the way up and i want to give you guys a look uh, at least an idea of what it looks like here much more gro ground clearance from the back end now and let's close this while we're at it so you guys get an idea with it slammed in the back <laughs> that's awesome we have pop out door handles here we also have soft closing doors all the way around they are very quick to soft close and man the only thing lacking in this back seat is pretty much rear sun shades we do have the meridian sound system in here and i hate to break it to you guys but when you push the base at high volume the sound system really falls apart unfortunately but the materials here are definitely some of the best i've ever seen in the back seat and you'll see in the front seat as well here's the door handle it's kind of hard to tell when it's dark on the inside to find the door handles in the first time you're in here but they're located in front of this handle yeah but the materials here are top notch definitely 100 grand if you're asking me these seats are amazing the semi-inline leather is fantastic it's super soft buttery soft to the hands and you sit in here of course lots of headroom the headliner is exquisite we have vents on the top as well as a little coat hanger here a little led light with a pull down handle closing the door sounds super solid we have a mat pocket right here and we have this high-end material back here it's semi-soft and we also have very soft back to these seats as well we have the adjustable armrest for the front seat but i wanted to show them all in the back seat because you get the best idea i'm not quite sure why you need these adjustable armrests when you have this big armrest in the middle i love the carbon fiber reinforced plastic throughout the vehicle the trim it really gives it a luxurious experience and we have these unique pull and push dials back here that you'll also see in the front seat to control the fan speed the climate control the temperature etc it's really neat i push it down so i can play with my uh, heated and ventilated seats which is pretty cool i do not have massaging seats back here we a large glass roof bisected with this piece in the middle but it is kind of like aluminum it's not plastic down below we have usb c's for both sides and look at even during the daytime it's illuminated and then you also have 12 volt here as well folding down the armrest that <laughs> this spring loaded action is very satisfying i could do that over and over again but this seems to, i'm not sure what's going on here this is not working 100 percent. it's not closing so pressing this button doesn't really do anything uh, and actually this portion likes to stick inside here since this doesn't clamp down in here and this is a big problem getting out of the range rover sport this wheel well here really limits your leg like i've seen this in small cars like 
a Lexus UX, for example, when you slide out, it's really hard to get out of the backseat of this thing because your leg is running into this wheel arch. Got the first edition skid plate here, beautifully cladded front door, just like the back door. In fact, I like the back door a little bit more with that little Meridian logo that was on the back door. The ones up here just don't look quite as quality in my opinion, but the speaker grill down here, this aluminum grill is quite excellent and everything in here looks very, very high quality. Closing the door, let's straighten out the wheel here. An overload of technology. This screen, well, I got the massaging seats going on, why not? But this screen has been an absolute joy. The resolution is incredible on it. I do have wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. It's wirelessly charging my phone. You can see that icon right there. You also have a 360 camera in here, no surprise. You have off-road camera as well, and you can have your, you know, your center locking diff as well as your rear locking diff in here. You also have four-wheel steering in this machine. I don't know if you can see on the head-up display, but you have your uh, pitch and roll information that comes up on the head-up display. is pretty cool, but I haven't been able to get Android Auto to pop up on the head-up display. Lots of different drive modes. It's a bit overwhelming, but this is what you should get in a $120,000 vehicle. And while I flip through all these, the uh, you know air suspension is adjusted. I can feel the car moving around, uh, getting the vehicle in the right height and different settings uh, for the drive mode you have it in. Just like the back seat, we have these combination meters here inside of the rotary dials. Um, the automatic climate control in here has been a bit strange. It doesn't seem to want to push the fans very hard, so I have to kind of do a little manual override on the fan. So it's a double pull up, and then I can control the fans here. Now, these touch sensitive buttons are not the most responsive like I'm pressing this you have to really press it down hard and you get a little click to let you know that you activated the massaging seats the heated and ventilated seat stuff but it's just not like I'm pressing hard on auto right now nothing's happening you kind of have to there it is it took me about five or six so not very well implemented here and it's just unfortunate we have so much glossy black we have such beautiful carbon fiber inside the door and then you get this blinding showcase here in the middle the shifter is that same kind of high quality material that was on the back of the seat so my hand is happy here and then on the inside we have usb-c as well as a usb-a deep storage my hand can disappear even underneath these usb chargers but the problem is where are the cup holders well they slide away and it doubles the problem if you have something plugged in down here, but you want it in the cup holder. It's just not the most ergonomic set setup in here if you plan on bringing cups with you. This, there we go. We have this first edition here, but sometimes it can be hard for it to pop out as you guys are seeing. I, I don't know why I can't get this to pop out. You almost kind of have to shove it forward, but I don't want to break it either. But yes, I'm just gonna leave that where it's at. You also have this additional almost phone holder here, but it's gonna be underneath the armrest. So this is, maybe you would hold on like an ID or something. And a very deep storage plate space here. It is not cooled for champagne, unfortunately. I do really enjoy this 13 inch screen. This is 13 inch as well. It just has a lot more uh, height to it. This is a, a more of a widescreen display. But the center button here pops up uh, your information customization. You can change the display layout. You can make it focused on the map, kind of like we see in Audis, for example. Here is the last display where it has the map, the digital speedometer in the middle, and then your metrics over there on the left. This is also what 120K will bring you, is a nice widescreen mirror with double, very soft illuminated makeup lights, but we have a double visor system this does not extend, which is okay, but this flops down as well. So if you're in the morning sun, you can have, you know, the, you know, if you're taking a left, you don't have to readjust your visor. So I really appreciate that here. And lastly, we have a digital rear mirror. It works perfectly fine in here. This also has an auto park button, which I'm not, I'm not playing with in a $120,000 vehicle. I'll use the excellent camera system here. And with the four wheel steering, it is so easy to maneuver this large, even though it's not the longest vehicle, the widest, it weighs over 5,000 pounds, but it's just so helpful with the top down camera to, to maneuver this thing with the four wheel steering. Like it's, it would be an amazing off-road machine as well, but I am only taking this on road for you guys. And this thing on road is unbelievable. It is so smooth. 
mostly quiet. Let's just roll into the gas here. God. And that's not even full throttle. That's just like you half throttle and this V8 always wants to party. So much so that it is actually kind of hard to drive this thing with a light foot. It, with the smallest of like uh, pushes of the pedal, it wants to go. She wants to party all the time like Eddie Murphy. So what I do every time I get in the vehicle because it doesn't remember my setting is I pop out this little guy, which actually I just leave it all the time. I don't keep it in auto anymore. I go straight to eco mode and that doles out the throttle response so you can control this twin turbo V8 and this beast a little bit better. This steering wheel in here is a happy place for my hands to rest on. It is absolutely exquisite. The, steer, the stitching in here is amazing. It's just so soft. Every, all the materials in here are really, really impressive, except for this glossy black plastic that I mentioned earlier. But other than that, the dash, the stitching, the, the headliner, the, the quality of the seats is all really on levels that I'm not used to seeing in my, my, my reviews. Also something I'm not used to seeing, especially in a luxury car, is this wind I'm getting from the A-pillar. I even get it around 25, 30 miles an hour. I hear there's some sort of gasket leak going on. I'm not quite sure, but I have what is otherwise a vault-like experience tainted with some wind noise up here. Now we're gonna get hard into the brakes and now it pulled a little bit to the left but it still stops this behemoth pretty quickly. You can also play with uh, the glove boxes here. We have a 12 volt inside of there. It is all felt lined, even the arms to this. It's very impressive. Close that, you have the other uh, glove box that pops down. It's pretty nifty. Jeez. <laughs> it's so fast. And that's, it's just, oh. It is satisfying. The V8's ungodly smooth. Uh, it is very satisfying to push this vehicle. And even in the turns, I know I don't have a lot here in Florida. Might as well take this turn here since no one's around me after leaving them in the dust with this 500 plus horsepower. Even in the turns, it takes it surprisingly well. Like, and then powers out of it very, very impressively. One of the best handling uh, and performing SUVs I've ever been in all while being like super comfortable and smooth at all times. Like it has ridiculous power <laughs> while being completely refined at the same time. There's nothing raw about this thing. It's, it's a cream puff with a rocket attached to it. The steering feel is hard to explain because you have four wheel steering. So at lower speeds, it feels a little unnatural but overall it has a, a decent enough resistance to it, but still very smooth as you would expect in a luxury vehicle. Fuel economy is not gonna be great. You'll be lucky to get around 20 miles per gallon out of this. I've been idling this a lot, so it's hard to say what my fuel economy is gonna be, but I would say mid to low teens is, is what you would probably be getting with this. And would I recommend getting the V8 in this? Well, I mean, if money is no object, yes, and you just wanna drive around like a hooligan all the time. Otherwise, the six cylinders and the plug-in hybrid six cylinders probably gonna be more than enough power. Um, I would love to test out this vehicle in fully electric mode. It didn't want to downshift there, but it's okay because the V8 has so much torque. Um, and there's also a fully electric version coming coming out, uh, I believe in 2024 of this vehicle. So there's just so many different powertrains, it's hard to wrap my, red around, my head around them. There's a vehicle that might have the uh, similar engine to this in, on the inside. And honestly, like I said, I'd be happy to skip this and get um, you know the, the, the six cylinders. But that, big, that begs also another question is, would I get this over something else in the market? And maybe the only other vehicle I've tested that can kind of compete with this would be the Volvo XC90 T8 Recharge. That comes in at about 30 grand less, maybe even more. The quality materials overall are probably better on this, but the, the Volvo, I like the wool seats on it a little bit better. I like, uh, yeah, maybe even the looks of it, but there's the old Range Rover Sport up there. Pleb, or a peasant. So I'll sum this up. There's very few vehicles that have made me feel like this. Um, I feel like royalty when I'm driving this. And there's only a couple other vehicles out there, maybe like the Lexus LX that gives me similar vibes. I just feel like I'm better than everyone. 
driving this vehicle. So it has that sort of prestige and pedigree to it that's really hard to put into words and on paper until you drive it and you sit in this throne and you feel like you're a god amongst men. Um, even here in Naples where the average car is like a BMW or you know catfish sonatas. I mean yesterday I saw two identical Bentleys going down the road uh, and it's just like okay just another Bentley and this feels like it stands out even here in Naples. I'm excited to see what Range Rover does with the SV and the upcoming SVR variants of this. Those things are just going to be insane. They're really tailored to go head to head in some ways with say like the Cayenne turbos out there. So zero to 60, well below four seconds. Like I have more than enough performance with this meager 523 horsepower. So I can't imagine what those things would be like with 600 plus. I wanna say thanks to Range Rover for sending me the Range Rover Sport. This thing has been a complete pleasure to drive this week. And I look forward to testing more of your products in the future. If you guys made this far in the video, I appreciate you. Hit the like button, that helps me out. And let me know what your comments are and questions are down below. I can't wait to see what you guys have to say. Oh, I like also, I did mention this, the aluminum paddle shifters that I never use in here, but even those are high quality with aluminum because they're cold to the touch. Where I was like an Audi S6 this week and that was just like, felt like cheap plastic uh, shifters. So even the paddle shifters, higher, higher level. All right, signing out from the 2023 redesigned Land Rover Range Rover Sport. This thing has been a hoot. <laughs> All right, I gotta sign out before I get myself into trouble with this twin turbo V8.